Dato' Azmin ialah Ketua Perikatan Nasional Negeri Selangor Menjadi kewajipan dia untuk berikan hadiah pada kita Supaya Selangor jatuh kepada Perikatan Nasional It may not be Christmas yet but Perikatan Nasional is hoping for a political miracle from Azmin Ali A victory in Selangor that even Santa Claus might find challenging to deliver Unlike PN strongholds in the north and the east coast, Selangor requires a different approach the coalition cannot rely solely on exploiting ethno-religious sentiments to secure votes. Slango demands a vision that is inclusive and progressive. In this context, Azmin Ali, as the former Menteri Bursa, may be PN's best chance at capturing this crucial state. As well, compared to the more rural, you know, Malay majority areas, so so I think PN is banking on him to make inroads into this urban and semi-urban areas um, by, by virtue of his experience, you know, being a chief minister and also being the, the long-time MP of Gomba. Dr. Azmil Tayeb, a prominent political scientist, acknowledged Azmin's relative strength in Gombak. However, Azmin's appeal may not extend to other urban areas like Ampang or Pandan, where different dynamics are at play. However, PN's decision to select Azmin comes with its own set of challenges, most notably his association with the Sharitan move. This political betrayal continues to leave a bitter taste in the mouths of many urban voters and supporters of Pakatan Harapan, making it an elephant in the room that cannot be ignored. I mean, it was already a baggage for him in the last election. I mean, he did quite well, actually, to be honest. He still received a lot of votes. I mean, the majority is still quite big um, between him and the eventual winner, right, the, the current MB. I mean, compared to Zuraida, for example, right, I mean, his right-hand person uh, who got completely demolished in Ampang. Yeah, I mean, I, I see that he's still weighed down by this baggage, by the Sheraton move, and also now with the association with PN. So... For PN to, to effectively use Azmin uh, in the election, and it needs for Azmin to appeal to the, I guess, more moderate or more progressive Malays. Um, Malays who are not really hung up on the uh, ethno-religious sentiments that we see now, you know, being played up by PN. And also to, for non-Malays, non right? I mean, maybe they, they constitute a, a sizable percentage of the population in Selangor, in the, especially in the urban areas. So Azmin need to show that, that he can appeal to, to this demographic. PN will need to adopt a significantly different strategy in Selangor as the issues that resonate in Kelantan, Terengganu and Kedah may not be as effective in persuading voters in Malaysia's wealthiest state. Um, I think it's up to him convincing uh, voters that PN in Selangor is different than say PN in Kedah or Kelantan and Terengganu. You know, PN in, in Selangor is more pro uh, programmatic, for example. It focuses more on bread and butter issues and, and putting himself forward as, as this ex example that, you know, um, like, you know, I, this is my track record. You know, I've led Selangor this past 10 years um, before. In Selangor, this, this figure in the Ustaz, whatever, ulama, they don't really have that, the same cachet, the same influence as they do in like, Kelantan or Terengganu or Kedah, right? So people, well, you want professionals, you know, people with proper educational background, for example, to manage the, the state economy and things like that. So maybe he can come up with a slate of PN candidates who are, you know, professionals and, and to show how serious he is, you know. And then that these are the people who would be, if they win, they will be my ex-co and they, they would help me to, to manage the state, to steer the state. Despite having announced his intention to take a brief hiatus, from politics in February of this year, Azmin Ali has returned with full vigour. On Saturday, he addressed over 2,000 Slango PN members who had gathered for the state's election convention. Azmin did not just target his former allies in Harapan. He also claimed credit for the ascent of his successor, Amiruddin Shari. He stated that Amiruddin was not PKR's preferred choice as Menteri Bursa, but he had personally advocated for the necessity of showcasing a younger leader. In response to this, Lango Harapan chief Amiruddin fired back. Amiruddin underscored that he had previously managed to triumph over Azmin during the 15th general election. 
Azmin has also been observed participating in high-level state events. One notable occasion was his interaction with the Sultan of Selangor, Sultan Shadafuddin Idris Shah, prior to the Sultan's departure for the Holy Land to perform the Hajj pilgrimage last week. Azmin's close relationship with the Selangor Palace might have been a factor in PN's decision to appoint him as the leader of their campaign for the state. However, Azmil remarked that this connection is unlikely to be significant in the outcome of the state election. I don't think his connection with the palace has any bearing on whether PN um, can do well in Selangor or not. Because, I mean, unless if, if it comes to, to a tie, and then maybe if the, the Sultan has to decide on who's, who's to become the, the chief minister, then I mean, it might work in his favour. But the way things are looking right now, it's, it seems like um, PH will, will hold on to Selangor um, despite um, reduced majority. But to see that the, the palace play um, an active role, I mean, I, I don't see how that, that, that it can be done. However, not everyone within PN seems pleased with the possibility of Azmin being nominated as the coalition's candidate for the Menteri Besar post. Senior past leader Iskandar Abdul Samad has expressed that there are numerous other qualified candidates who should be taken into consideration. Could this be the start of divisions within Selangor PN? Only time will tell. However, according to Azmil, PAS may have limited influence over the affairs in the state. PAS has been known to, to have their um, grassroots movements, um, the rank and files, you know, working the ground. But PAS track record has, you know, has shown that PAS hasn't done well in urban and uh, semi-urban areas, right? Despite um, organizing on the ground, despite, you know, having their headquarters there. So they simply don't have the, the same appeal with the urban Malay voters compared to in Kelantan or in the Malay heartlands, you know, Kelantan, Terengganu, Kedah. So I think in the end, you know, it makes more sense for PN to to have Azmin as the point person, you know, in capturing Selangor, especially in these this urban seats. While there may be some friction between PAS and Azmin, it pales in comparison to the potential issues that could arise if Harapan and BN fails to counter the threat posed by PN in the state. According to Azmin, it appears that Harapan will retain control of Selangor, however, with a diminished majority. On the other hand, Amno and Amana are anticipated to counter greater difficulty. This situation could potentially destabilize the current unity government. If PN manages to make significant gains in Selangor and Penang, it could deal a severe blow to the relationship between Harapan and Amno. I think it definitely will have it will have an adverse effect on the this current unity government, especially if Amno takes a beating, I guess, in the in the election as as expected in these Malay majority areas. Because I think that would just further just, you know, making it even more this this royal the royaled up the you know, the, the, the coalition and then you know all the dissensions and within the you know, within Amno, for example, you know, um, there's still, there's still there already a lot of unhappiness, right? I mean, not just within Amno, but also, I mean, you see the Tony Pua's recent statement and all those things, even within PH as well, uh, not happy working with Amno. I mean, despite having the numbers, you know, I mean, this, this current unity government is not that stable, right? I mean, then the number can, can just, I mean, the, this coalition can, can crumble, you know, um, it doesn't have a good foundation. So I think the, it's quite interesting to see you know, the kind of damage that um, PH will sustain after the state elections because I don't see them, uh, I don't see PH or, or, or the, the unity government um, doing well in the state elections. I mean, definitely not in Kedah, Kelantan, Terengganu. You know, that's a foregone conclusion for, for PH. Or a PN victory there is a foregone conclusion. But more importantly, in Penang, Selangor, and and Negeri Sembilan, right? So I think the, I mean, this is the, I guess, the moment of truth. I guess you know, see how 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 strong you know this working relationship you know between these parties. However, there is something Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim could do to lessen the blow on the unity government by offering Amno safe seats. So I think the, I mean, what. Uh, I mean, there definitely will be reduced majority, but what I think what Anwar can do 
or, or not, not, not not just Anwar, but I guess when it, when it comes to the the seat negotiations uh, later on, not just in Selangor but also in Penang and also in in the East Milan, you know, is for PKR especially to offer Amno um, maybe a few safe seats, you know, um, for them to contest. So and then when you look at the trend, the the, the green wave, all areas that has you know more than seventy five percent Malays, I mean, they all went to PN. I don't see that that the the green wave is letting up anytime soon. Um, so I think that, that it will still persist, it will still continue. So I think to, I guess, um, to arrest any kind of, you know, um, rebellion or any kind of, you know, conflict, I guess, within this unity government, within AMNO especially, I think the PKR, uh, ANWAR especially, you know, needs to give up some seats to AMNO so that they have some, it's something better than nothing, I guess. The upcoming Selangor state election is poised to be a pivotal moment for both PN and PH. With Azmin Ali taking centre stage, the spotlight will be on his capacity to navigate Selangor's political terrain and garner support in vital urban and semi-urban regions. Presently, it seems PN stands to benefit more from Azmin's involvement, despite concerns about his tarnished reputation. Conversely, it is Harapan and Amno who should be apprehensive as the persistent strength of the green wave could inflict significant harm to their precious unity government. Aprasad reporting for Kini TV.